Good morning. It is Monday, the 23rd of October, 2023, Monday in the week of Trinity uh, 20. Uh, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. And that means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What is the task of worship? It is indeed to heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation, literally the rock of our salvation, to know our um, eternal security and stability, um, the assurance of um, our security with God, um, because he is an almighty God. Uh, he is the creator of all things, and he has freely set his love upon us and taken us as his own people. And so on, on this side, there is this immense security. On the other side, of course, there is 
the jeopardy in which we put ourselves when we do not hear his voice, when we refuse to uh, uh, listen, heed his word, when we do not know his will, when we do not walk in his ways, when we do not do the works that he's prepared for us to walk in. And then that happens, we fall, uh, like the de uh, generation of the wilderness, we fall short of our um, destination. Uh, we are um, fall short of the kingdom of his peace. And so uh, today, both with gratitude and with the uh, faithful obedience of, of a grateful faith, uh, let us give ourselves to the work of worship. Psalms for the 23rd day of the month, morning prayer in the 1928 prayer book begin on page 482. There are Psalms 110 through 113. Psalm 110 is one of the most important psalms uh, from the point of view of prophecy. It's very frequently quoted or alluded to in the New Testament in very significant ways uh, because it has testimony both of Christ's deity he is great David's greater son. He's the one whom David himself calls my Lord, uh, but also his eternal priesthood uh, um, and, uh, uh, um, accomplished on, in his sacrifice on the cross uh, and his uh, eternal session uh, at the right hand of the Father. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy power out of Zion, be thou ruler, even in the midst among thine enemies. In the day of thy power shall thy people offer themselves willingly with an holy worship. Thy young men come to thee as dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord upon thy right hand shall wound even kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies and smite and sunder the heads over divers countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up his head. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 111 celebrates the goodness of God, uh, at, in, at the, the overflowing goodness of God um, at, at work. Um, the goodness of God, you might say, in all his works, and it focused particularly on uh, the redemption and the covenant. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, secretly among the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is worthy to be praised and had an honor, and his righteousness endureth forever. The merciful and gracious Lord hath so done his marvelous works that they ought to be had in remembrance. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are true. They stand fast for ever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the good understanding of all they that do thereafter. His praise endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 112 is a sequel to Psalm 111. The focus shifts from the works of God to the works of the godly man. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. He hath great delight in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the faithful shall be blessed. Riches and plenteousness shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the godly there ariseth a blight in the darkness. He is merciful, loving, and righteous. A good man is merciful and lendeth, and will guide his words with discretion. For he shall never be moved, and the righteous shall be had in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of any evil tidings, for his heart standeth fast and believeth in the Lord. His heart is established and will not shrink until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed abroad and given to the poor, and his righteousness remaineth for ever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The ungodly shall see it, and it shall grieve him. 
He shall gnash with his teeth and consume away. The desire of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And Psalm 113 celebrates the um, majesty of the Most High God, which is revealed in his mercy to those who are most low. Praise the Lord, ye servants. Or praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. The Lord's name is praised from the rising up of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God that hath his dwelling so high and yet humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and earth? He taketh up the simple out of the dust and lifteth the poor out of the mire that he may set him with the princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the book of Proverbs, an instruction in practical wisdom, complementary to the teaching of the law. We call this wisdom, a prime example of what's called wisdom literature. So you have law and you also have wisdom or instruction and wisdom. So there's a real overlap there, but they have a distinct quality. The Proverbs and the, the uh, preeminent example of wisdom in scripture is Solomon um, in his uh, uh, wise discernment as a judge uh, and his prayer for wisdom rather than riches or honor. And uh, so it is uh, with the figure of Solomon that many of the these proverbs, these wise sayings are associated. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the judgment of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, uh, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And now, after that little prologue, he begins with actually an idea we've just heard in Psalm 111. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear here means not panic, servile fear, punishment, uh, but above all, reverence, awe, uh, a loving and faithful recognition of the overwhelming greatness of God. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit, we shall find all precious substance, we shall fill our houses with spoil, plunder. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, and here wisdom is personified as a woman, lady wisdom, dame wisdom, sometimes called. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets, she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make my words unto, make known my words unto you. 
spirit of wisdom and knowledge, right? That's one of the gifts of God. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand, no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Here endeth the first lesson. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firm, glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the epistle of Paul the Apostle to Titus, like the epistle to Timothy that we've just read. Paul is giving advice uh, to Titus as one of his uh, one of his missionary team, who's the, he, to whom he's given pastoral authority uh, in newly established churches in the Greek island of Crete. And the theme of this uh, letter is very much the way that the gospel produces godliness. Um, and um, uh, so there's a, a, a nexus there which uh, cannot be divided between faith and works. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which, at, which is after godliness, there's that word right at the beginning, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace, of God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Elders, let us say, presbyters or priests. So um, Titus has a kind of Episcopal authority here. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop, and here the term bishop is used interchangeably pretty well with presbyter, the distinction of the two did not come till somewhat later in the first century, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, near striker, not giving to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Notice those virtues there, both biblical and um, Greek, Hellenic. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, uh, those who deny it. But there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things what they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always, li always liars, 
evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. <laughs> A little irony there. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may abound in the faith. Uh, so there's a contrast here, the God that cannot lie at verse 2, and the Cretans who are always liars. Not uh, Therefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure. So much for the ritual purity laws. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. So if you actually know God, your works are going to be consistent with that. But if your works deny, uh, 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 are inconsistent, then you, in fact you don't know God. Being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Um, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in teaching or doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be denied, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Here endeth the second lesson. We show forth our thankfulness to God, not uh, with our lives, uh, but also first with our lips. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, but thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the faith of Jesus Christ, let us claim the gracious promises of the gospel for ourselves, for each other, for those we love, for all sorts and conditions of men, both near and far throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations. For Christ's holy Catholic Church and its unity in the truth of the word of God and uh, in brotherly love and charity, and for the faithfulness of the clergy and people of its churches among all nations, and here in Savannah and especially at St. John's. For our country and all countries of the world, for their peace, order, and good government, 
and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I bid your prayers especially for uh, Israel and the people of Gaza and West Bank. That they may be uh, delivered from the terror uh, and folly of Hamas. Uh, for Also for the people of Ukraine, of North Korea, of Darfur, of Sinjin. Bid your prayers for all those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, uh, that the Lord would comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers for those who are hospitalized in nursing or hospice care, those undergoing or recovering from surgery, those who are suffering critical illness, debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment. Those dealing with anxiety, depression, or mental illness. Those facing the challenge of sobriety. Those who are traveling, the women in childbirth and the children they're bearing, for those who work in dangerous occupations. For the very young and the very old, for widows, widowers, and orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, the hungry and the homeless, refugees, prisoners, and captives. I bid your prayers especially for those abducted by uh, Hamas uh, and uh, also for the um, uh, for Evan Gershkovitz and Jimmy Lai. For all those who are grieving, especially the family of Gary Schubert, who died this past Saturday, and for those who are dying, and for those who have departed this life in Christ and are at rest in him, that with them we too may rest in peace and rise to glory. And this day, that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, uh, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that is given us both to do and to suffer, not with eye service as men pleasers, but with singleness of heart, fearing God as the servants of Christ. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness, keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things which thou commandest. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in love and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore.
Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers as may be most expedient for you according to his good and perfect will.